hey everyone welcome back for another video we have been doing videos on taking off some structure works but we haven't done a video uh, where columns are involved and in today's video we shall do take off uh, for a very simple plan uh, it's a rectangular plan uh, and you, if you can see uh, the dimensions are given from inside the spread to inside the spread not internal dimensions of the wall but inside the spread foundation spread to inside the foundation spread and so this is a unique uh, diagram uh, that we haven't covered before and it is good that you know how to measure if you're given such dimensions uh, whenever columns are involved we have column bases and if you check at the plan uh, I'll use my highlighter this part uh, where I'm marking using yellow they are the column bases you can see the column bases and the columns are at the center marked in black so we have the column bases and inside the column bases we have the columns which are yellow in color then uh, where we have these broken lines they are the foundation trenches so this one uh, it's the spread on the outside uh-huh then we have the spread on the inside of the foundation strength so the broken lines are showing the foundation where the trenches will cover the red the red line uh, white uh -huh, it's the wall as you can see how you I'm highlighting it in yellow still all around we have the wall but at the corners we have the we have the columns so uh -huh. so I wanted you to understand that for those who need to know how to interpret uh, the drawings so we have the plan and the section uh, the section is section a a we are cutting it here so once we view it we shall see the foundation uh, strip this one here we have the vibrated reinforced concrete and down here we have the blinding then uh, the, uh, behind the strip we can see the outline of the columns the columns which are one meter by one meter so at the center we have the walls these are the walls and at the same place we can see we have the column behind it so you will not be able to see it from here so then we have mm -hmm, I'll use my highlighter this is the concrete the oversight concrete and you can see the dimensions that we are given for the depth is 1000 and it starts from on top of the oversight concrete to where the vibrated reinforced concrete begins we hope that is well noted then below the vibrated reinforced concrete we have the blinding down here so we have the 50 millimeters blinding we have the foundation strip uh -huh. we have the 200 millimeters of hard coal we have the 50 millimeters blinding then we have 150 millimeters concrete bed this is the ground level so from here downwards we have the soil uh -huh. So uh, that one we have been able to understand. Uh, this so we shall continue to make good videos for you. This one is based on a question that a student asked and they sent this drawing. So in case you have any questions, kindly write them in the comment section. If they are questions with diagrams, just email them. My email will be in the description box. If you like our videos, kindly give them a thumbs up so that all other students can be able to find them. If you are uh, have been to our channel and you haven't subscribed kindly subscribe and even hit on the notification bell so that whenever we post new videos you may be alerted here we want students to find it the very very easy to revise for their exams so we are here to assist students to revise for their exams and so if you have come across our channel kindly subscribe and like our video share them to your classmates uh tell them about our channel and let them come and let us uh, walk this journey together so we shall begin this takeoff and uh -huh. when we are taking off uh substructure works with columns uh we will start with site clearance we clear the site we shall clear, clear the site then we shall excavate the oversight uh -huh, to remove all vegetable soil then we shall go to excavating the column bases at the corners then we shall excavate foundation trenches after the column bases then we shall prank and strut support the 
the use of the excavation then we shall do the concrete work the concrete work we shall start with the blinding which is done at the bottom before we do the mass concrete then we shall do the column basis the mass concrete at the basis eh? then we shall do the mass concrete foundation strip mm -hmm. then we shall do vibrator reinforced concrete in columns you see the, the part that is coming up uh, the column which is below the foundation this is the vibrated reinforced concrete because it have um, reinforcements then we have the sewn form work in uh, column bases we shall take that off because we need the form work to hold our concrete especially when you're doing mass concreting then we have um, uh, sewn form work in foundation strip because there's mass concrete in the strips then we have vertical sides of the column we'll need form work then we shall come to foundation walling the walls in the foundation we shall do the hard call we shall do the maram blinding on the hard call then we shall do the dpm and anti-termite treatment on the maram blinding we shall do the form work all around uh the the walls so that you can do the form work oversight concrete then we shall do the floor bed then we shall reinstate the soil around the foundation where it was uh-huh so uh, we shall start with site clearance you see like in this picture we shall cut down trees we shall uh, cut down all shrubs uh -huh. in case there are buildings we shall demolish so let's start measuring how we do the site clearance now we have the plan here we are, we are given a uh, 10,000 is from uh, inside the foundation spread to inside the foundation spread so uh, what area shall we do the site clearance the site clearance will be done on this area I'm, I'm helping you mark using the red pen we shall measure if all that area that shall be used uh, the, during excavation you will follow through uh -huh. my legs are not so straight but you can be able to see Mm -hmm. they should be straight they should be straight uh-huh all this area uh-huh the key points you should note is the column bases should be included in the site clearance so how do we measure this red line this area for the length uh, we have been given 10,000 from inside the foundation uh, strip to inside 10,000 then for both sides we shall add 200 for the projection on the inside of the uh the spread on the inside of the wall here it's 200 then we shall add, add 200 for the wall then we add 200 for the spread on the outside of the wall then we shall add the dimension here what dimension will be here uh if from here the column base is 1000 if the column base is 1000 from here to here then we have subtracted 200 200 uh-huh let's start uh, if the foundation of the column is 1000 both we subtract uh 200 for the wall it shall be 800 800 divided by 2 shall be 400 on every side of the wall so here it will be 200 and these other 200 so from here uh, where we have measured 10,000 up to the inside of the wall is plus 200 then we add the wall 200 then we add the spread on the outside of the wall 200 then we add uh, 200 for the column spread so as you can see the projection on the inside this one is on the inside of the wall we shall add 200 times 2 on both sides this side and this side good then we add the wall 200 this side and this side and the other side then projection of the strip on the outside on the outside uh, we add 200 then projection for the column it shall be you add another 200 so uh, the total length for site clearance shall be 10,000 not better we have said it's 10,000 because 10,000 measures from the inside of the spray for the strip to the inside of the spread for the strip on both sides 
So to add the total amount of the wall, we have taken 10,000. We add 200 on both sides for the spring of the uh, foundation strip for the wall. Then we add the width of the wall. Uh -huh. Then we add the spring for the walls on the outside. 200 times 200 plus 200. Then we add 200 plus 200 for the spread of the columns. So it's already 10,000 plus 400 plus 400 plus 400 plus 400. We get 11,600, which are really the same for the wind. 11,000 plus 400 plus 400 plus 400 plus 400. We get 9,600. So we shall come and fill them in the takeoff sheet in 11.60 uh -huh, and 9.60. Fill the set of all bushes, grass, undergrowth, and burn away all arising. Excavate away 150 millimeters deep to remove vegetable soil and deposit it in soil heaps on site average 100 meters distance from the site. So all that area where we shall do the site clearance, we shall also excavate away the vegetable soil mm -hmm. for the same measurements. Then now we shall move on to excavating the column bases. The column bases are below the columns and we said the columns are the corners. Uh, the black part are the corners here. They are the column bases. Uh -huh. I am highlighting for you. Uh -huh. The column bases is this broken, these broken lines around the column. You see? This, this area, this yellow area that I'm highlighting is the column base. Uh -huh. And this is the section now, the section AA. Good. So, uh -huh. when we are excavating the column bases, Remember, the column bases we have been told they, are, they measure one meter by one meter. So for the length, we know it's one meter. And also for the width, we know it's one meter. What we don't know is the height for excavation of the column base. For To what depth shall we excavate from the ground level? Remember, excavation begins from the ground level. First, we started with stripping the ground level of all vegetable soil. So after the ground level, we shall remember that you have already stripped 150 millimeters. Okay, let's see from the section. We are given here, it's 1,000 from the top of the oversight concrete to the concrete below where we have the stoop footing. So if that is 1,000, we need to deduct 150 uh, for the oversight concrete. You see, 150 is above the ground. So 1,000 minus 150 will remain with 850. Then we remember that we had already stripped the site of all vegetable soil to a depth of 150. So 850 deduct 150, uh -huh, we remain with 700. After we remain with 700, now we shall add the base. We have the 350 here and we have, you see for the column base, this, this whole area is for the column base. So this one, we shall add 350. Then we shall add 50 for the blinding. So 700 plus 350 plus 50, it's 1100. So we shall say we shall excavate uh, 1100 from the stripped level. So excavate column base not exceeding 1.5 meters uh, deep, commencing from the stripped level. Then what shall we do to that soil that we shall that volume of soil that we have excavated? we shall add it to refill and ram. There is a heap of soil that we call the refill and ram. Actually, I'll do you a video explaining to you the difference between refill and ram and cut away because those are two heaps of soil that are involved uh, when constructing. So let's move forward so that you can be able to cover this. We shall move on to measuring foundation trenches. Uh, we will actually excavate foundation trenches after excavating the column bases. Now, what area shall we excavate for the foundation trenches? Mm -hmm. For the foundation trenches, know that we have already excavated the column bases. The column bases are here. This area is already excavated for the column bases. I'm highlighting it in yellow. Uh, this area is already excavated for. So, 
we want to know what area we shall be excavating for the foundation trenches. We have already excavated the column bases. So the remaining area is the one for the trenches is the one that we shall measure for to avoid measuring twice because the column bases have already been measured for. Good. Now, uh, if I can pick my pen and highlight for you uh, the center line of the foundation trench. You see the trench uh, will begin from like here and it will come, it should be straight. Uh, it will be in between the walls because uh, the trench is 600. So 300 will lie at the center of the walls. So uh, this area, uh, if you follow the red line, it will show you the length that we should measure for when taking the center line of the trench. Then we shall multiply it by the wing of the trench and the depth so that we can get the total volume of soil that we shall excavate for in the trenches. Okay, if we find the length of the red line, we shall have found the center line of the strip footing. Now, how do we find the length of the red line? The length of the red line, we shall first find the length of the center line of the trench, even where the columns are. You see, even where the columns are, let me highlight it using a different pen, even here, where the column is, the center line of the trench, it was to pass even here. Uh -huh. It was even to be here. But now we have already excavated the trench. And the formula that we have for finding the center line of the trench, it will cover the yellow and the red area. Length. So, uh, the, using our formula for calculating the center line of the trench, we shall take every external perimeter, then we deduct the number of corners times the width of the trench, or the internal perimeter, we add the number of corners times the uh, thickness of the trench. So in this case, because we have 10,000 and 8,000, which are the internal dimensions of the trench, we shall use them. So length 7,000, length 8,000. So the total perimeter shall be 8 plus 10, that is 18,000, multiplied by 2, together perimeter is 36,000. Then we shall add 4 corners multiplied by 600, which is the width of the trench, and which shall be 2400. When we add to 36,000, we get 3,800. Then, uh, that one includes the red and the blue part. Now we want to deduct the blue part so that we can remain with the red part. If we check on the red part, uh, it begins at the center of the column up to the end of the column base. To know the center of the column base, then from the center of the column to the end of the column base, we shall take the total length of the column base. The total length of the column base was 1,000. 1,000 divided by 2 was 500. If we divide the total length, which is 1,000, of the column base divided by 2, it will come to the center of the column. The that one has given us the length from the center of the column to the end of the column base, which is 500. If we have 500 for the length and 500 for the width, so we have 1,000 for every corner. How many corners do we have? We have one. We have two corners. Eh? We have three. Mm -hmm. And we have four corners. So four times 1,000. Uh, for, for the columns, we get 4,000. So 98,400, we we'll deduct 4,000, we get 34,400. So now we have the center line for, for the red part, which will be the center line of the foundation trenches, where it's not excavated. So it shall be 34.40, we multiply by the width of the trench, which is 0 0.60, and then we multiply by the depth of the trench now. What is the depth of the trench that we shall excavate? If we come to the section AA, 
uh, from the top of the oversight concrete. So where the concrete begins for the strip footing is 1000. 1000, we shall deduct the concrete bed at the top because that one is above the ground. It shall be 1000, we deduct 150. Then we shall deduct 150 for the excavating vegetable soil. Uh -huh. So it shall be 1000 minus 150 plus 150. The total that we shall not excavate is 300 because we are starting from the strict level. So 1000 minus 300 is 700. Then 700 we shall add 350 for the concrete and 50 for the blinding. 700 plus 350. Uh, that is uh, 1050 plus 50, 1100. So this one shall be 1.1. 1 .1. So excavate foundation trenches commencing from straight level, not exceeding 1.5 meters deep. Of course, 1.1 1 .1 is not exceeding 1.5 meters deep. And for that soil, you add it to refill and ram. Yani that soil, we shall use it again. So you add it to the refill and ram. Mm -hmm. After excavating uh, the trench, now we shall go to supporting the trench, uh, the sides of the trench, the soil. So it's called pranking and strutting to the sides of the excavation trenches. Uh, this one we can only measure it in size if it is uh, as, as in perfectly. So in the BQ, we only write item, and we allow a provisional sum which can uh, be which is which can change when you get to, to site so I have already also discussed about the sums that we shall be including in the bill of quantities uh, and we shall be laboring them as item so if you want uh, kindly check out for that video whereby I have discussed the sums uh, including the bill of quantities uh, this includes the keeping the trenches free from water we cannot be able to measure it from the drawings but that one we have to go to site so we allow a provisional sum so uh in takeoff we just write item but we shall allow the sum in the bill of quantities so after that we shall go to concrete work whereby we shall start with blinding blinding we shall start with blinding for column basis uh blinding is that light concrete that is usually applied uh below the mass concrete which is 50 millimeters it's just poured there so it's 50 millimeters uh, deep and the thickness of it is 50 millimeters but the length and the wind measures like the column base so the length is one meter the wind is one meter and because it's 50 millimeters uh, thick the smm which gives us in takeoff uh, says that it should be measured in area so how many columns do we have we have four columns then uh, they measure uh, <clears throat> they measure one meter uh, by one meter length and width so it's 50 millimeters call concrete ratio one is to four is to eight blinding uh -huh, and a column basis and uh, that volume of blinding we usually deduct it from respir and run because that soil we no longer need it and add it to cut away when we are adding it and deducting it from the heaps of soil we measure it in meter cubic so that's why we multiply it by 0 0.05 uh, so we shall take the total volume of the blinding we multiply by 0 0.05 to get the total volume of soil which we shall deduct from refill and run that soil heap that was to be used to refill and we add it to cut away the soil heap that was used that should be used to be uh, be disposed from the site next we shall measure the blinding for the strip footing uh, the blinding for the strip footing is under the strip footing and it's 50 millimeters uh, thick. So uh, to measure that blinding, it's usually measured in square meters too because it's only 50 millimeters thick. And this is the rules according to SMM. So uh, to find the area of the blinding, we shall take, take the center line for the strip footing. We multiply by the thickness of the strip, the thickness of the uh, trench so the strip footing the width is the the center line is 34.40 the width of this trench is 0 
So we shall write 50 millimeters concrete uh, blinding and a foundation. Then this uh, area we shall multiply by 0 0.05 to change it to volume so that we can be able to deduct from refill and ram heap of soil and add to cut away the soil to be dispersed away from the site. So the, that volume we shall fill it here. The answer that we shall get here we write it here multiply by this we get the answer so this volume of soil shall be deducted from repair and ram and added to cut away so uh, we shall go to uh, mass concrete now in the column bases and in the foundation strip uh, for the column bases the mass concrete we know the length of the uh, column base and the width of the column base that's when you have already been given now the thickness the depth of the uh, mass concrete is this one here you see all this this area here all this one for the column you know the column is one meter by one meter then it was uh this it is 350 you see it's 350 millimeters depth so uh, 0 0.35 vibrated reinforced concrete ratio 1 is to 2 is to 4 in column bases and deduct uh, that volume of soil from refill and ram because we no longer need it it has been replaced by the concrete and add to cut away then we go to vibrated reinforced concrete in this foundation strip uh, in the foundation strip we have already been given in the drawing its concrete ratio 1 is to 3 is to 6 in foundation strip so uh, vibrated reinforced concrete ratio 1 is to 3 is to 6 then uh, the strip footing the center line is 34.4 then the width of the foundation trench is 0 0.6 then the depth is 0 0.35 so uh, we deduct that volume of uh, soil that has been replaced by the concrete from refill and ram and add it to cut away uh -huh. we then go to mass concrete in uh, columns uh, the column now is like this wall you know they have overlapped because once we do the section we shall see the wall but ba behind the wall there is a column which is 200 by 200 and you can, as you can see from the plan here the column and the wall are equal in terms of thickness the length and the width so the column is 0 0.2 200 millimeters and two, 0 0.2 width how many columns there are four columns then the, the depth of the the height of the columns the height of the columns will be uh, the columns usually go up to where the slab starts so we shall take 1000 then we shall deduct 150 so up to the ground level 1000 minus 150 it's 850 so it shall be 0.85 vibration reinforced concrete in column then uh, for that volume of concrete that is in the column we shall deduct it from the seed and ram and add to cut away because that concrete has been has replaced the soil so we shall deduct that soil from the feed and ram and add to cut with the same volume of soil mm -hmm. uh, then we shall go to the sole form work uh, to hold the vibrated reinforced concrete we shall require a uh, form work so we shall start with the column basis how many bases of columns do you have there four uh -huh. then the column base measures one meter by one meter by one meter by one meter so we shall first take the perimeter which is four four meters uh, then we shall multiply by the depth of the vibrated reinforced concrete at the basis is 0 0.35 then because this uh, one meter is not covering everywhere around you see there's this 0 0.6 here this side it's we will not have the formwork and here three, 0 0.6 two sides and we shall come and deduct it in the next step so in the first step we shall assume we are taking all around four meters and a depth of 0 0.35 so that we can get the area for the formwork uh -huh, for the column basis eh? remember so then we deduct data for the column basis 
as two two sides we have two sides we shall deduct 0 0.6 for the foundation trench for the openings that shall be left there then a height of 0 0.35 two sides for how many columns four columns for four columns each column shall have two sides which shall be left open which measures 0 0.60 for this foundation strip and 0 0.35 for the depth of the uh, foundation strip and also for the column so that one we have we shall have found the total area of the formwork for the column basis now we go to the sole formwork for the vertical sides of the foundation strip for the foundation strip we shall take the center line which is 34.40 uh -huh. then we shall multiply by 0 0.35 that is the depth of the uh, foundation strip then we shall multiply by two sides because the the sole formwork is on both sides mm -hmm. Then we shall go to vertical sides of the columns. When we are bringing them up to the ground level, we have four columns. The total uh, perimeter of the columns of uh, length 0 0.2 and with 0 0.2 is 0 0.8. Then we multiply by the uh, depth of the columns. The height of the columns is 0 0.85. Good. So... Uh, the next one we shall measure the foundation walling uh, the foundation walling we need the center line for the walls remember unlike the foundation strip footing the walls will even be constructed where we have the column bases look like this part which i'm highlighting in yellow you can see this part we have the wall and it's inside the column base so uh, the the walls the center line for the walls will be different from the center line of the uh, column bases for the from the center line of the strip footing so now we need to calculate the center line for the walls if the internal uh, dimensions of the strip uh, foundation spread is 10,000 and 8,000 uh, we have the internal dimensions of the foundation spread from here to here uh, and we want the center line for the walls and we know that the center line for the wall lies where we have the center line for the uh, foundation strip for example it will start from the center of the column then it will go it will pass at the center of the walls uh, just trying I'm just trying to draw a straight line but it will pass at the center of the walls uh -huh. like that eh? just like uh, the center of the foundation strip then it shall go all around where we have the walls I believe you can be able to see it I'm just highlighting it uh, for my students who you say who are finding it hard to follow because we care for you uh-huh you see the center line for the wall will pass or around where we have the walls just like i have highlighted in in red so uh to find the center line for the walls we have said that the length is internal length is 10,000 internal width is 8,000 so the internal perimeter the perimeter for the inside of the spread is 36,000 to get the center line for the walls we shall add because it is the same as the center line for the strip footing we shall add number of corners and the thickness of the footing so four corners thickness of the footing 600 and remember we have said we shall take uh, the thickness of the strip footing because it's the same the center line for the strip footing is the same as the center line for the wall so we shall add 2400 so we shall get that it 400 but remember at every corner we have a column at the corners measuring 200 by 200 there where we have the column we shall not have the the walls so we shall deduct the columns so uh, what is the length of the columns that we shall deduct remember the center line usually pass at the center so if we have the column here so the center line shall come up to the center of the column then outside so from 
to the center then outside if from here to here it's 200 and from here to here it's 200 so the column it will go half into the column 100 then half out of the column 100 so for every column we shall subtract 200 how many columns do we have four four times 200 800 so that is 400 we deduct 800 to get the center line for the wall is 37 600 so the total area of the wall we shall check the center line then we multiply by the depth of the wall the depth of the wall shall be 1000 from uh, on top of this oversized concrete to here then we deduct 150 for the concrete bed so 1000 minus 0 uh, 150 is 850 mm -hmm. so we shall go to refill and ram remember we have constructed the wall so that's volume of the wall that has been constructed we need to deduct that volume of the wall from the uh, uh, a volume of soil equal to the volume of the wall from refill and ram and we add to cut away meaning we are deducting it from the soil that we shall use to uh, refill and add it to the soil that we shall use to dispose away from the site so what is that volume of the wall to get the volume of the wall we shall take the center line of the wall since the thickness of the wall then we multiply by the depth of the wall so that's 7.60 that is the center line of the wall we multiply by the thickness of the wall which is 0 0.2 then the depth of the wall is 0 0.85 deduct from rfr and add to cut away so after doing the wall now we shall go to the hard core the hard core is 200 millimeters uh, depth as you can see from the section here so uh -huh, 200 millimeters approved hard core wall uh -huh. uh, well, uh -huh. hardcore, well ramped and compacted. Then on top of the hardcore, we shall do the maram blinding, which is 50 millimeters thick maram blinding. Then we shall treat the surface with hardcore of the hardcore with insecticide. So this one we shall measure in terms of area. And remember the area that we shall do, it shall be inside the wall. So I shall highlight it here using my red pen. Uh, the area where the hardcore shall occupy it shall be sorry it shall be inside the walls so i am not able to do very straight lines using my mouse but it's inside the walls so we shall take the length on the inside and the width on the inside so uh, from here where the red is up to here at the end if this one was 10,000 we shall add 200 on both sides and it shall be 10 400 so 10.4 and the width 8.4 aha uh -huh. then uh, we shall go to the dpm and mass concrete dpm and mass concrete shall include even the walls so it shall be from the end of the walls outside the walls up to the outside the walls so from here to here it shall be uh, we shall take 10,000 you add 200 plus 200 for the wall 200 for the standard spread plus 200 for the wall that is 400 400 then you multiply by 2 is 800 so it's 10.8 and 8.80 a thousand gauge dpm with 150 millimeters lap and 150 millimeters mass concrete uh, floor bed laid on hand coal and finished to receive floor. now we shall measure the foam work that will support the oversight concrete uh, to be in place so uh, to get the foam work the foam work usually lie on the external part of the wall so you need the external dimensions of the wall we have 10,000 as the internal dimensions of the spread from here to here so we need up to outside the walls so we shall take uh, 10,000 plus 200 on both sides for the spread then 200 on both sides for the wall so we shall get the length is 10,800 uh, and the width is 8,800 to get the perimeter on the outside we shall take 2 into bracket length plus width 2 into bracket 10,800 plus 8,800 we get 39,200 so 39,200, we shall fill it uh, in the dimension, uh, take of sheet 39.20, so in form work to rest 
edges of floor bed 75 to 150 millimeters wide so we shall finish with uh, measuring the center line of the reinstatement remember this reinstatement we shall do is outside the walls to re to return the soil outside the walls so that they can it can be up to the ground level we had stripped the foundation uh-huh so the walls on the outside there's a gap between the ground level and the walls we have done because we had stripped um, where we have uh, done the, the construction so we need to return that soil which we had stripped so that the ground level can be even uh, the house the construction and the neighboring soil can take one level so that you can not so to avoid leaving some space so that one is what we call centering of reinstatement to return the soil where it was or around the building so uh in which to calculate the centering of the reinstatement we did to take the uh external dimensions of the wall then we add half of the space that had been left by the strip footing the space that had been left on the outside was 200 so uh -huh. to get the center line of green statement first we shall find the external dimensions of the uh, wall then we shall add number of corners since the thickness of the um, spread on the outside so uh, the external dimensions of the wall uh -huh, we take 10,000 plus 200 200 for the internal spread uh, plus 200 200 for the walls we get the external length is 10,800 and the width is 8,800 so the perimeter we shall get is um, that 39,200 39,200 then uh, we shall add the projection uh, number of corners there are four corners then the spread the outside spread where we are reinstating the soil the width of that place is 200 so 4 times 200 is 800 so that's 9 200 plus 800 to get foot 1000 so we shall say it's foot 1 uh thousand is the center line then the width of that uh place where we are reinstating the soil is 0 0.4 then we shall take the depth of the reinstatement is the that one we had stripped 0 0.15 so we deduct this soil from the spoil heaps because we had already placed it for disposal remember it was the stripped soil we remove it from the spoil heaps and add to refill and ram so by that we shall be have been able to take off uh, all the substructure works for that building which was measuring uh, 10,000 on the inside of this foundation spread by 8,000. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, write them in the comment section. We are here to answer all your questions. Uh, if you have liked this video, kindly give it a thumbs up so that all other students can be able to find it. If you like our videos, just like them and subscribe to our channel. Uh, and we shall continue making good content for you. Continue asking questions and we are here to answer you. So that's all the best in your age.